let's go ahead and stop playing around. Let's hit this question. So we got another one of these the, these uh, neuro questions where we got to break down the whole Asia scale, C7 specifically, and figure out what the functional outcome is going to be. So if you haven't answered this question as of yet, go ahead and lock in your answer A, B, C, or D, and let's freaking get it. All right, so Jax is being seen for a C7 uh, Asia B spinal cord injury. The patient has been participating in physical therapy for two months to address his functional limitations. Which of the following is the highest level of function the patient is most expected to achieve? So we have independent wheelchair to bed slide board transfers. All right. Modified independent rolling in bed, independent with feeding, and then independent wheelchair to floor transfers. All right. Here we go. So Trent locks in A. Bad dress, what you got? Israel, what you got? Put your answers down. Let's get it. All right. So let's start this one off. Jax is being seen uh, for a C7 Asia B spinal cord injury. Always at the top of the order. We have to figure out what does this statement mean here? Like what is the C7 Asia B spinal cord injury? That should be processing, marinating, cooking in your mind right now as to what we're talking about. So when it comes down to spinal cord injuries, we have to know, well, what muscles are primarily innervated by that particular nerve root? Like, why is C7 important? For what muscles is it important for? So we have lats. Uh, of course, a lot of you know that the triceps are a major muscle group um, innervated by that specific nerve root. So those are really important musculature for our patient to be able to use to do certain activities. Now we just got to answer, well, what activities are those? All right. So we look at Asia B as well, and we see that Asia B, obviously, that that is our scale, our system that we use to determine the severity of a spinal cord injury. Asia, Asia B is incomplete, and it really means that the patient has sensory preservation, but they don't have any motor below the level of the lesion. And that's C7. So we have no motor below the level of C7, no motor functioning. All right. Are we all on the same page with that? Is that the same definition that y'all have for Asia B? We should be on the same page. All right. Let's move down the question. It says the patient has been participating in physical therapy for two months to address his functional limitations. Pretty straightforward. Patients and PT got you two months. He's been working. All right, to address his functional limitations, but they don't tell us which ones those are. Okay, cool. Let's move down to the question stem. It says, which of the following is the highest level of function the patient is most expected to achieve? Can I read that to y'all again? Can I say it again to y'all? Because this is really important. Which of the following is the highest level of function the patient is most expected to achieve? All right. And now we have our answer choices. So we have a let's knock this out. So what I'm going to do on this question is I'm really going to show you exactly how I process this puppy. And how I look at it and how I come to the final answer. All right. So this up here is really important to me. I don't know if that caught y'all's eye, but it, it's important to me. And also this statement of the highest level. Oh, shoot. Y'all see me. I could never color in between the lines. All right. Following uh, is the highest level of function is important to me. And then the part where it says most expected to achieve. And so when I look down at a independent wheelchair to bed slide board transfers, the first thing I'm thinking is, hmm, so when is my patient at what level is my patient able to do independent wheelchair to bed slide board transfers. That's what you should be asking. So I need y'all to put that down for me right now. At what level am I expecting my patient to be independent with wheel, wheelchair to bed slide board transfers? All right. And so thinking about that for a moment, you should be saying, uh, well, I expect my patient to be able to do that at C7. That should be really not a problem for them. They should actually get to the point where they're able to do more of a popover transfer because now they have the lats. And we know that that's like scapular depression um, and, and, and uh, shoulder extension. And then we also know we have their triceps for uh, elbow extension. And so our patient 
who is a at a C7, they should even be able to get over to a pop-up transfer. So they definitely should be able to do an independent wheelchair to bed slide board transfer for sure. No doubt. Hands down. All right. So right now I'm liking that answer. I'm liking it. I ain't saying I'm picking it. I like that answer. But let's go to the other ones. We got B. Modified independent rolling in bed. All right. So this is important. Ask yourself the same question. When do I expect my patient to be able to do this activity? At what level? C4, C5, C6, T1, T, T, T10? Like what level is that? All right. And so, you know, with, with modified independent rolling in bed, I really expect to see that around that C5 going into C6 range. But I really expect a patient at an early C6, when we're very first training them, to be able to get to the point where they're able to do modified independent rolling in bed. So I'm going to cross this between a C5 and a C6 here. All right, so that's a little bit higher level. I would expect my patient to be able to do beyond modified independent rolling in bed. Actually, a patient who has gotten through C6 and we've been training them, they should be able to do independent rolling in bed with a C6. So B, I already don't like B because our patient should have already been able to do that with a C6 level. All right, so that's not even there yet. So let's go ahead and eliminate B. B's not it. That's that's a little bit too um, uh, light of an activity or, 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 or not independent enough for our C7. Our, our C7 should be beyond that point, all right? So let's look at C. C says independent with feeding. Independent with feeding. Again, I asked you all this. And so I saw a lot of Cs. A lot of people have been writing me Cs through my Facebook Messenger as well, saying that that's the answer. So I want you all to ask yourself this question. When would I expect to see independent feeding? At what level? All right, and this work can kind of get close to some lines here. Maybe some of y'all will say, what, C8, C7, C6, which is it? You should be saying, well, it it is uh, in the potential for a patient with a C6 to also do independent feeding. Now, can they do that at C7? For sure. But a patient has the potential to go independent with feeding at C6. So I'm going to write C6 here. All right, so... I don't really like that answer too much. I really feel like the patient can go beyond the independent feeding, um, that that we can get to a higher level for sure than that. But let's hold on to it. Let's look at D. D says independent wheelchair to the floor transfers. Y'all talk to me about that same thing. Is it C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, any of the Ts? You should be saying at this point that patients with a C7 tend to have significant problems doing a wheelchair to floor transfer. They typically require moderate assistance at best. Patients who get themselves into more of a T1 through T9 are the ones in which have that capability or the potential to get to an independent wheelchair to floor transfer. Why? Because a lot of times when you're trying to do that level of a transfer, you need some level of core stability or really strong upper extremity. You need to have that grip strength. You need to have uh, also your triceps in place, your lats in place, all that in place. And it's really beneficial if you have core stability as well. So some type of lesion in the T area, in the thoracic area, will render you able to perform an independent wheelchair to floor transfer. All right, so this is a little bit too far down the line. I'll put T1 to T9 is where I would really expect something like that. All right, and so this is beyond what we would expect. Told you I can't color in the lines. So that leaves me between A and C. And really at the end of the day, what do I expect? Most expect the highest level. I expect an independent wheelchair to bed uh, with a slide board transfer. I, I expect that to be that the highest uh, level function. Of course, they can go higher than that. But given all these answer choices, for sure they should be able to do A, no doubt. For sure that's the most expected or the highest level given all of these. 
again, C would fall in the potential of a C6. C6. All right, final answer is A here, independent wheelchair to bed, slide port transfers. For those of you who got this question correct, which was quite a few of you, congratulations. For those of you who didn't, now you'd understand a bit more of how to look at this type of question. I don't want you to memorize the answer. Screw, screw that. I want you to learn how to fish. Learn how to look at these types of questions so you, you can start getting every single one of these correct.